Two, one. All right. How are we doing today? Thanks for joining us, guys. My name's Kenny I'm with Magical Butter. We're going to be doing a little demonstration today on, on how to make tincture, some uses of it, you know, some tips and tricks, and, and fielding some questions that you guys had out there. So we appreciate you guys joining us today. Uh, if you're not, uh, you know, following us, make sure to go join us on on um, on Facebook, Magical Butter. Uh, dot com. We have a Magical Butter Users United group, which is a great place, um, and also Instagram. Um, you can also check out our, uh, our YouTube page as well. We got uh, quite a few recipes and, uh, and videos on there for you to check out and, and help you out. So let's get right into it. We're going to be doing some, uh, some tincture today, making some tincture in the Magical Butter machine, uh, and then showing some kind of uses of, uh, of how to do it. Uh, and then we'll also be making some gummies. And uh, stick around, we're going to be doing some, uh, some giveaways for our, uh, our new bundle that we got going on. Uh, so it's a Magical Butter Machine, the uh, Filter Press, which is my uh, favorite product right now that we got. It's an awesome, awesome product to help filtering out the, uh, the infusion. It uh, also comes with the decar box and thermometer combo pack, uh, a butter mold, and a jar of the coconut oil that you can infuse into. So. Um, Make sure you stick around there. We're going to be using hashtag Tincture Thursday for that giveaway. Uh, so make sure you, uh, you, you throw that in the chat there. Uh, follow, like the video. And uh, please, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and ask some questions. And we'll be, uh, we'll be answering your questions if you got them along the way. So let's get right into it. Uh, you know, basically today, we're going to be using some uh, ethanol alcohol. And that's going to be... Um, you know, high proof grain alcohol. So we want to use something that's 150 proof or higher. Uh, this is actually going to be, um, you know, higher than that. If you can get the, um, the the 190 proof, that's even better. The stronger the alcohol, the better. Uh, makes for an easier extraction, uh, easier reduction, less water content, um, and uh, makes for an overall easier extraction. So let's get right into it today. We got some of our, uh, our hemp product here. It's decarbed hemp. And you can see here our decarb box. This is our decarb box. Comes with the thermometer. Uh, obviously, decarb is very important. You always want to do that even when you're making a tincture, butter, oil, whatever kind of infusion you're making, it's important to decarb. Uh, basically, the mo one of the most important steps in the whole process. If you get that part wrong or don't do it, you're going to be missing out on a lot of, uh, a lot of potential medicine there. So. Let's go ahead and uh, show you what we got going on here. We got 14 grams of our decarb hemp flour. And uh, we're going to go ahead and dump that in the machine. So you don't really need to, when you're decarb, you don't really need to grind it up too much. The machine's going to be doing all that for you. And uh, the decarb, the heat will be able to, uh, to penetrate the, the, the herb. And sometimes I kind of like to break it up into smaller pieces, you know, popcorn sized pieces, just to get a, a good decarb there. So let's go ahead and pop the lid off here. We're going to add our, uh, our flour into the machine. All right. And then we have our two cups. So we're doing 14 grams, two cups uh, for the uh, ratio here. So we've got two cups of our alcohol. Go ahead and dump that right in. All right. And now it's important with uh, when you're doing tincture, you want to do the 130 degrees. Alcohol has a pretty low uh, evaporation point, uh, so when you're doing butter and oil, you know, we use 160. With, uh, with alcohol, always use 130. It's going to make sure you're not going to evaporate in the machine and uh, have some loss in there, so we don't want that. So we'll go ahead and plug that on in, and we're going to press the temperature button first, like I said, 130. And we're going to do, do a four-hour cycle. Now, you can do eight hours. Four, eight, uh, you know, they're both going to work great. I, I, I always kind of do the four-hour cycle. You can do an eight-hour cycle. It's not going to hurt it at all. It could actually only help. Um, I think when you're using a really high-proof grain alcohol, the four hours is plenty of time to get, you know, the maximum extraction. Um, but feel free, if you have the time, you can do an eight-hour cycle at 130, uh, 130 degrees, and um, you'll still get a great, great product out of it. So we got that going here. So... Um, you know, we're going to let that go for, for four hours. Just joking. We're going to go ahead and do some, some TV magic. We're going to go into the future here. So uh, as, this is, uh, as this is going, we're going to finish this off later off camera. 
All right, and here we are in the future. We got our finished product here. So this has been running for four hours. We got this prepped up and ready. So once the machine's done, it's going to beep. It's going to let you know it's done. Uh, the lights are going to be flashing after the, uh, the four hours is done. And we're going to use our handy dandy filter press. This is a great product. I really love it. Uh, it makes the whole process of, of filtering a lot easier and, and uh, simplifies the whole process, really. And, um, you know, there's no more like straining and, and, and squeezing, and, and you get your maximum yield out of it because you're able to really push down and, and get the most out of it. Um, all right, so where's the, where's the top part for this? Is it off? Oh, it's already in here. Gotcha. All right. So you can see here, it comes in a few different pieces. It's the mesh filter here. I'm just going to include that, add that right in there. This goes right on top with the funnel part, snaps into place. Boom. What's really great about it, it goes right onto the mason jar. So you're able to filter into exactly what you're going to uh, store into. Um, it also fits a uh, standard size or a wide mouth. So it's got the both options here. You can do either one, whatever, uh, whatever jar you have. Uh, so we're just going to loosely uh, tighten that on there. And then let's just go for it. We're going to pour this through. So this is our two cups, 14 grams of, uh, of hemp flour. All right. You don't want to go too fast and overfill it. So you can see it's filtering out through there. Make sure you get all that in there. All right. So now you just come here. Actually, let me go ahead and get all this out. So we got the, the plant material in there. We want to make sure we get all that out. So that's what's really good about this filter press. You'll be able to press this and, and, and maximize your yield. So let's get all that goodness out of there. And uh, this is pretty much spent material at this point, so you filter this out. Some people like to save it, reuse it for some things. I, I personally, I don't really uh, use it for that, but you definitely can. You can let it dry out, use it as a garnish, put it in some, uh, some sauces. All right, so here we go. You can see that it's filtering out, and you can put as much pressure as you want on there just to make sure you're going to maximize your yield. All right, slowly dripping. All right, so you can see that we got mostly everything out. Once you're done here, all this in here is going to be pretty dry. So that's what you want. All right. So that's what's great about that. See how simple that was? No mess, no, no, no mess, no fuss, none of that. So we'll put that there. So now we have our, uh, our filtered out um, tincture here. It's our alcohol tincture. So from this step here, you know, you could use this tincture as is. You could put it in dropper bottles and, and take it as is. Put it under your tongue, take it sublingually. Uh, it's really great. Tincture is, uh, is good to take sublingually. It gets in your system a lot faster. The absorption rate's a little higher. The onset's quicker. Um, the only downside is it's, you know, it's not very pleasant. You know, it's a very, uh, um, you know, kind of harsh taste and, and you don't really get used to it. So there's a few things you can do to kind of, uh, you know, offset that and and uh, you know, make it a little more uh, palatable. Um, let's go ahead and get this uh, turned on here. So we're going to be reducing this. We're going to be making some gummies with, uh, with the tincture, with the reduced tincture, which is uh, the FICO, fully extracted cannabis oil, or um, you know, we call it MBO, magical butter oil, same thing. It's, uh, it's a really great, inf uh, really great product. I love it. I usually do uh, all, my, all my infusions now are tinctures. Um, I just really love a tincture because it's so versatile. You can, uh, you can add it to anything, add it to foods, add it to drinks, add it to, uh, to lotions. Um, like I said, put it in dropper bottles. You can make some capsules, mix it with MCT oil. You could really get really creative with it and, and make whatever you like. All right, so let's go ahead and hold this down here. Turn that on. We got this going. Now when we reduce it, we want to do a... Uh, you know, medium low heat. We don't want it too hot. We don't want it boiling. We don't want to go uh, too hot to where it's going to, you know, potentially damage some of the important, uh, you know, medicine and properties in the uh, in the tincture. So um, we're going to start with 
with one cup here. So let me just go ahead and make it easy so I could see what we're doing. So we're going to measure out one cup. So tincture's a really good uh, ingredient for gummies. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can kind of make gummies and, and what you can use as far as infused product. Another popular one is, is the coconut oil, obviously. I like, um, I like using the alcohol because you could really, you know, kind of concentrate it and get it to the, uh, the potency that you're looking for. Um, with coconut oil, you're kind of capped as how much oil you could actually fit into one batch of gummies. You know, you can only fit so much coconut oil into one bag of gummy mix. If you put too much, they won't set up. You know, they'll kind of be oily and, and uh, you know, won't set up to be more like jello consistency. So with the tincture, it's great because you could take a full cup of it, reduce it down. I could put that entire cup into one batch of gummies. So you could really get, um, you know, pretty uh, specific with how much medicine you want to fit into your gummies. So we're going to go ahead, pour this on in. We got one cup here. One cup of tincture. This should take about 15, 20 minutes. You can see it's already starting to kind of bubble there. I'm going to turn it down just a little, a little bit. We don't want it like boiling, rolling boil. Really, I just kind of want to see it like simmering like that. Uh, maybe a little bit of steam's coming off. You can tell that it's, it's reducing. And you're going to want to get this down to a consistency that's, uh, you know, kind of like maple syrupy. It gets really thick and, and dark green and, uh, and, and concentrated. And most of the alcohol will be out, you know, so we're evaporating the alcohol away. Alcohol evaporates around uh, 172 degrees. So, you know, that's, that temperature is well below the temperature that it takes to, uh, you know, evaporate any of like the cannabinoids and, and things that you want in there. So you don't have to worry about damaging any of that. All you're doing is basically evaporating the alcohol and you're left with all the essential oils and all the good stuff that you want in the, uh, in the tincture. So, um, that's why I really love the tincture. What's really great about it is you can add that. So once you reduce this down and make your fico, you could add that to a stick of butter. You know, melt down some butter, mix it in, and now you just infuse some butter. Um, you know, so there's you can get really creative with it. I like adding uh, some MCT oil. So we were kind of talking about making some tincture, and it's, you know, not so pleasant. It's got that, uh, that alcohol taste. Uh, what I like doing is taking a cup of my tincture like this, reducing down to about uh, a quarter of a cup, so I'll get this down about 75% reduced down. And then I'll add about three quarters of a cup of MCT oil, um, you know, and make sure that's uh, fully homogenized, mix it together. And then I would put that into my dropper bottles. That way you still have a little bit of the alcohol for the sublingual effects um, with the MCT, but it's not going to be so harsh. And a, a lot of times that's what, uh, you know, dispensaries use. If you look at like a tincture from a dispensary, uh, the main ingredient a lot of times is MCT oil. Um, so check that out. We got all those recipes on our website. And um, so we're going to let this go ahead and start reducing down. I'm going to go ahead and bloom my gelatin mix so we can get ready for that. So we got our uh, cherry gummy mix here. Super simple. It's an all-in-one pack. Uh, there's not really, uh, you know, too much that you have to do to make the gummies with this pack. So it's all-in-one. It has everything you need in here except the water and your infused product. So we're going to add the seven ounce of water first. So let's go ahead and uh, take our water here. So seven ounces of cold water. We got our gummy mix. Really great flavor too. I love this cherry. I was never really a big like cherry kind of, uh, you know, flavor. It always like, to me, it's like medicine-y, but not this flavor. It's really good. I think it's... Uh, a really good flavor for um, for edibles. It kind of helps mask some of that that taste if that's if that's what you're looking for. So first, you want to bloom your uh, your gelatin. Uh, basically, that's going to help it set up. You just want the water to basically be absorbed into the uh, into the sugars into the granules here. Should take about 10, 15 minutes. The time is depend. You know, it can vary depending on. Uh, there's a lot of things that could uh, kind of play into that, like the temperature of the room, the humidity you know, how cold your water was. There's a lot that goes into it. So, uh, you know, if it doesn't bloom after 10 minutes, just give it another five, 10 minutes and, and you know, you should get to where you need to be. So we just want to make sure all this is uh, kind of evenly distributed here, break up a little bit of the clumps. And then we're going to let that, uh, that set up as this, 
as our uh, alcohol evaporates over here. So you can see here we got a nice slow little little simmer going, little bubbles. We don't really want it roll bo rolling, boiling. You could smell that alcohol burning off. Another very important process in there, or step in this, and, and something that I, uh, you know, wanted to make sure that I get that point across is you don't want to use any uh, gas stove, any open flames around it, candles, um, you know, pilot lights from your stove. You don't want any of that around. So if you do have a gas stove, you want to look into getting like a hot plate, induction heater, something like that, um, because it's really important to uh, to be safe when when you're messing with this alcohol. This stuff's uh, you know, pretty flammable. So, I'm sure that uh, goes without being said. But you know, you just gotta gotta be careful. All right. As that's reducing down, we're gonna go through a, a few of the questions that you guys had uh, had sent to us. And um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to throw them in the chats. Uh, again, we're doing a giveaway uh, at the end of the show. We got our bundle going on. So uh, it's the machine, the filter press, the decar box, a butter mold, and a jar of coconut oil. So you got everything in there to start and complete a cycle and, and really get, uh, uh, you know, make it nice. So ma make sure you hashtag us, uh, hashtag Tinctured Thursday, Tinctured Thursday. We're cooking with Kenny today. Cooking with Kenny. That'd be a nice little cooking show. Cooking with Kenny. All right. So this is getting nice and bloomed. You could already see this is starting to get nice and bloomed there. So we're getting where we want to be. We're going to answer some questions. We got a question from, uh, from Heather Brown. She says, how long will the tinctures last? The tincture, what's great about it is this, the shelf life is pretty much indefinite. You know, you're, do, you're, you're infusing into the, uh, the grain alcohol, so there's not really much, you know, that can grow in there and, um, you know, fester in there. So that's really good. You're not going to have any issues with, um, with shelf life there. You're going to have it until you're, you're ready to use it. Uh, you know, it, the only th after a while, it'll probably go bad just from degradation, you know, like UV light and things start breaking down over time. But that's going to be a long time. Usually if you keep it in the freezer as well, obviously it won't freeze. It's alcohol. Uh, so store it in your freezer. And also very important, you can see here that we have this jar, which is, the, uh, you know, the blue color. This is going to help uh, block out the UV light. And the UV is, you know, a big part of what breaks down. Uh, the cannabinoids and breaks down the tincture and, and loses potency over time. So it's really important to have these, uh, you know, colored glass jars uh, to prevent that. So, you know, how long will my tinctures last? It's pretty much indefinite. You know, you could have it stored in your freezer, stored in a dark, uh, you know, dark jar, and, and you're not going to have any problem with, uh, with any degradation or, or breaking down, at least for, you know, a year plus. You're not going to even have to worry about it. So. Uh, tinctures are indef indefinite, so good question there. Uh, we got another question here from, uh, from Drews. Uh, he says, with 70 grams of herb and five cups of alcohol, how many milligrams will I get per cup of infusion? So, you know, that's, uh, we need a little bit of information to find, that, uh, to find that number out. It's really easy if you know the number. If you get your stuff from a dispensary or you had those lab results and you know the percentage of your herb, you know, 20%, 15%, whatever that is, with that number, you can find out the total amount of milligrams that's going to be in your, uh, in your infusion. So once you know how many milligrams are in your, uh, in your infusion, then it's really easy for you to kind of break it down and, uh, and know how many milligrams are going to be in each recipe. So we actually provide a dosage calculator on our website, which is really helpful. So you don't have to do any of that math. You just put in, the, uh, you just put in your numbers you know, how strong your, uh, your herb is, how many cups you're using, what you're infusing into. It's going to calculate it all for you, give you a, a milligram amount, and then you can go further and, and, uh, and basically show you how many milligrams would be in each, each dose, each, um, you know, gummy you make or whatever you make. And um, if you don't know the percentage of the herb you're using, you can, uh, can kind of do your best job to kind of guess. You know, if it's top shelf stuff, it's going to be in the 20s. If it's good but not great, you could say it's 15. If it's, you know, some shake or some trim, then you could say it's about 10%. And at least that'll give you, a, a, you know, a, a, an estimate of, of what you're working with and, uh, you know, kind of find out what's going to be in it. I, I think, though, if you don't know the percentage, the best way to do it, the best way to find out is just kind of trial and error and, you know, try it. You know, try a little, you know, start slow and low and work your way up. So, you know, you try a little bit, wait an hour, you know, 15. For tincture, you only have to wait probably 15, 20 minutes uh, for, it to, uh, for the onset. 
uh, but you want to wait a little bit, kind of see how you feel, and kind of work your way up from there. And uh, like I said, we provide all that uh, information on our, on our dosage calculator on our website. Really helpful. If you do need help with, uh, with breaking it down and kind of figuring out these, uh, these dosages and percentages, you know, feel free to give us a call. We're here to help out. You got our team here. I answer the calls. We got a few other uh, awesome uh, teammates here that'll, uh, that'll answer your call and, and help you along the way and, and walk you through that step. Because I know it's really important to, uh, to, to get your dosage down. I know how important that is, especially when we're using it for, uh, for medicating purposes. So we want to know what our dosage is. So, um, so good question there. Nice question, Drews. Um, we got another question here. Uh, can you show the final FICO RSO when it's done in the pan and everything's burned off? Yes, I will. I will do that. So once this is done, you can see here we're almost, we got, probably got about halfway done. So the, sm the lower it gets, the lower the volume, the faster it's going to evaporate. So you just want to, you want to watch this. You don't really want to walk away from this. You want to kind of stir it constantly and, and, and make sure that nothing's sticking or anything. Uh, but it's important to not walk away from this because it can go from this liquid state right here and then uh, the alcohol evaporates away and then it turns into that MBO, that FICO, and you could potentially burn it and, uh, and you don't want that. Uh, you know, one little tip though and, and trick, when you get down to this point where you reduce it all down and it's uh, kind of in its uh, molasses state and it might be a little too thick for you, you need to move it around and transfer it or whatever, you could add a little bit of alcohol back to the pan, kind of, you know, mix it back around and, and kind of uh, get that uh, pliable again. And that makes it easier to transfer if you need to or, uh, you know, add to, uh, to recipes or, or whatnot. Um, so yes, we'll show that at the end there. We got uh, uh, another, uh, another question here. How long should a tincture sit under my tongue? So really, when you're using straight alcohol, it's probably going to, you know, it's, it doesn't take very long. It's going to not be very pleasant, so really as long as you can. Um, you know, I would say about 30 seconds is probably going to be the best. You know, you want it to absorb into your, uh, you know, under your tongue, into, into those glands under your tongue and, and get right into your blood system. And so, you know, usually takes, uh, you know, about 30 seconds, I say, would be a good time. But as long as you can. I mean, a little longer is probably better. Uh, but, you know, like I said, with, uh, with adding some MCT oil to your tincture, I think that'll help kind of make it uh, a little more palatable for you. And uh, you can, you can uh, put it on your tongue a little longer. But you want to you wanna do it as long as possible, really. And uh, all right, just make sure this is, see, it's getting nice and concentrated here. We're almost there. You can see our jello is nice and bloom. So that's what it should look like. All the water has been absorbed. You can kind of move it around, and nothing really goes anywhere. That's what you want. All right. Uh, we want to thank everyone again for tuning in. We're doing a uh, we're doing a uh, Tincture Thursdays today, cooking with Kenny. We're in the Magical Butter Studios. We appreciate you joining on on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, make sure you like the video, follow us. Uh, you know, send an invite to a friend. You know, we want everyone in here to uh, to learn with us and, and and get better and 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 learn how to medicate the best ways. That's what it's all about. All right, so <clears throat> we're making some tincture today. We're doing the uh, reduction of the uh, tincture. We did a uh, 14 grams of, of hemp flour in our machine with two cups of alcohol. And we are at the point now where we're reducing it down to a FICO, it's a fully extracted cannabis oil, and we're going to make some gummies with it. So the gummies with the, with the FICO is really good, like I said, because you can make it very potent and get it to, uh, to your liking. All right, so you can see that getting, we're almost to that point. So we're almost there. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for the questions. Uh, uh, you know, another question we got, why, why use tinctures? You know, so there's different ways that you could use, use the tinctures and, and uh, you know, benefits to using the tincture. One is the, you know, take it sublingually. You're able to put it under your tongue. gets in your system uh, a lot quicker. The onset's faster. The absorption rate might be a little higher because it doesn't have to go through your, uh, through your body and be metabolized and you know a lot of stuff gets lost when it goes through your uh, uh, through your metabolism that way so using the tincture is uh, there's a lot of good benefits to it the um, you know usually when you're doing like butter or oil it depends on what you're making as well so tincture is good if you're gonna do 
uh, you know, dropper bottles or, uh, you know, make gummies and hard candies. I think it's really great for that. If you're just doing like cookies or brownies and stuff like that, you know, butter and oil is a great recipe for that. You could always stick to that because um, it's got the, uh, you know, the fat in there and it helps bind to it. So we got almost done here. You can see here, I'm going to turn this down just one or two so we don't over evaporate here. So you can see this stuff's getting nice and concentrated. It's nice dark green. And this stuff is very potent. So we just took a full cup of tincture. We're reducing it down. It's probably going to be about a tablespoon or less of this concentrated oil. So really, you only need about the size of a, of a, a, a grain of rice would be a dose when you do the FICO. Very potent. It's really good uh, for a lot of, lot of things to, uh, you know, to make it and, and make it really, really potent, really. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and add our, our gummy mix. So can you see that? They said they wanted to see. Let me go ahead and kind of show a little bit. So I'm going to stop now at this point. So you can see here that it's, you got an overhead camera. It's, come on. What are we doing here? All right. So you can see there, it's like some black tar stuff. That stuff's very good. So what I like doing when I make my gummies, I like adding the, the jello, the bloomed gelatin mix directly to the same pan. Um, you know, one good thing about that is you don't have to try to transfer this stuff into another pan and you lose a lot. That stuff's not very easy to work around and, and, uh, and work with. So I like adding it to the same pan. And we're just going to go ahead and add our gelatin mix in here. We're going to make sure this gets all dissolved and all the sugars and granules dissolve. And um, make sure it's nice and homogenized, mix it around. So we're going to turn it back up. So we're doing all this on like a low heat, low, medium low. You don't need to use a lot of high heat for any of this stuff. And you can see here it kind of uh, changes the color just a little bit. So it will darken your gummies a little bit. I know that's a lot of, a lot of times people have that question that, that it kind of changed the color. And that's okay. I mean, it's going to be a little, uh, a little different there, a little different color, but uh, still it's going to come out very good, very potent. We just put a full cup of tincture in here into one gummy mix. Uh, like I was saying with coconut oil, you can't put a full cup of coconut oil into one batch of gummy mix. It won't work. It won't set up. It's too much oil. So that's what's really great about the tincture is you can get it down to uh, the potency that you're looking for. Really customize it. All right. So we're going to let that kind of dissolve a little bit. You just really want all the sugars and granules to, uh, to dissolve, and it's going to be a nice, silky, smooth texture uh, after that. All right, we're going to get this ready here. All right, so a few more questions here while we got this going on. If I use the eight hours, does that mean I get a more potent tincture or just darker in color? So the darker color comes from, uh, you know, you're doing a little, more, a little longer time, so you're extracting more of the, uh, the plant material. Um, which is okay. You know, when you're doing a, an extraction in the machine with your herb, you're doing a full plant extract. So you're getting all the parts of the plant. Uh, you, you know, you get that entourage effect. It's not just isolating one or two things in there. So you get that full uh, medical, you know, medicinal value from the entire plant, which has a lot of, you know, good properties to it other than just the cannabinoids. So I really like doing a full plant extract. Look into the entourage effect. It's a real thing. It's great. That's why I don't really like making distillate gummies. Because this is just like an, you know, isolated from, from the, uh, you know, from the flower and, and it doesn't really give me the best kind of, uh, you know, uplifting feeling that I'm looking for. All right. And uh, so eight hours, you can do four or eight hours. Um, you know, the eight hours is good. If you have the time, it's not going to hurt to go for it. When you're using a high proof grain alcohol, I think four hours is plenty of time. Um, if you are doing... Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of product like uh, you're maximizing like the machine using four cups, five cups, and a lot of herb. Maybe it's a good idea to do eight hours so you can help maximize that extraction. Gives a little more time for that extraction to happen. So I think um, you know four or eight hours will work just fine. It's totally up to you. I think four will still give you. You're getting mostly everything out in those four hours. I've done both uh, plenty of times. Haven't really seen too much of a difference in uh, in potency and effectiveness. All right. All right, another question here we got from, uh, from Chip Jones is, uh, where can I find the recipes for FICO? Other than gummies, I'm looking for, uh, 
I'm looking for other good options. <clears throat> so yeah, we have on our website, um, under our base recipes, you'll find the FICO recipe. Uh, it's called, uh, we call it MBO, like magical butter oil. It's also FICO. You could use a search, if you can't find it easily, it's under the recipes, base recipes, you'll find it. Uh, you could also use our search function on our website and just type in MBO or FICO and it should pop right up. We got a nice detailed recipe on there and a video as well. So you can kind of follow along and you know, get a little visual aid on it that way. So I just want to stir this a little more, make sure that we're getting nice and uh, blended and homogenized here. Make sure everything distributes evenly. It's pretty much done now at this point. You can see that it's nice and silky, silky smooth. All right. And from this point here, it's as easy as adding it to uh, adding it to your measuring cup or some kind of uh, uh, you know thing to pour and make it easy. I really like these silicone cups because you can squeeze them. You really kind of get a, a better pour when you're doing your gummies. So we're going to be making some 10 mil gummies today. So let's go ahead and turn off our oven, our stove here. All right. Let me do it with my left hand. I'm left-handed, so I got a little better of a uh, dexterity here. All right. So pour it in there. So you kind of want to move quick a little bit with this because this will start kind of uh, setting up on you and, and it'll make that a little harder to pour into the molds. Um, if you're doing a lot, a larger batch, uh, what I like to do is have a little bit of like a hot water, warm water and a, and a in a, in a bowl or a cup and you could set this in there and it'll keep it nice and uh, nice and thin. So let's go ahead and pour into the gummies. You can see how easy this is. Nice and uh, nice squeeze on that on that mold there. So these are the 10 mil gummies. All right. Thanks for joining us guys. Make sure you stay tuned. We're going to be doing a giveaway for uh, for a nice bundle we got going on today. You could check all that stuff out on our website, Magical Butter. Make sure to follow us, uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook, throw some likes out there. We always love to hear from you guys. If you got uh, questions or recipes and, you know, anything like that, feel free to share it with us in the community. That's what it's all about. Also, if you ever have any questions or need any help with anything, you can call our 1-800 number. We're here to help out. We're here to answer your questions. I'll, I'll be... Uh, you know, answering the calls all the time. So if you call, you get me. You know, maybe I'll uh, I'll hook you up with some some cool stuff. Just don't tell anyone. All right. So we're almost done here. So you can see that we got these nice and filled. These are 10 milliliter gummies. So it would be easy to uh, to figure out the dosage. So to figure out the dosage for each piece here, if we knew the percentage of the herbs, so if we started with one cup, you know, I'd find out how many milligrams are in that one cup. So I'd say it's 1,000 milligrams that I have in one cup of tincture. I reduce it down, still going to be 1,000 milligrams in that, you know, small amount of FICO that we made. So now we have 1,000 milligrams in this amount of gummies here. So basically you would just count the number of servings that you make and divide by 1,000. So if we got, you know, uh, 15 here, and then another 24. So basically you would divide 1,000 by 24 and you're looking at around uh, 24 milligrams per, uh, per piece, which is great. You know, everyone's different, depends on what you're looking to make. So there we go, we got our gummies. We're gonna let these set. You know, basically you just wanna let them set for about an hour or two hours. You could leave them on your countertop. You could put them in the refrigerator to speed it up. I like to kind of just put it in the, uh, in the fridge and, and help that process speed up. And then uh, let's go ahead and set these in the fridge. All right, you want to be careful here. So our gummy trays are nice and rigid, you know, it's not really, you know, folds that easily. So it makes it easy to transfer this stuff when you got it in liquid form. I'm just going to set it there. We're going to do a little. Is it to the right of the side of it? 
Hey, we're gonna do a little TV magic here. We went in the future. We're back. Welcome to the future. This is our gummies when they set up. So you can see you got the nice mold on there. Beautiful gummies. Very good, uh, very good consistency and flavor. I love to chew on these things. Mmm, so good. So these pop out really easily. Once they're set up and dried, they're just going to pop right out. You can see here, boom, pops right out. So I love, I love making gummies. That's kind of like my go-to nowadays. They're really nice. You sh should store them in your refrigerator uh, until they're ready to be eaten. Uh, you know, kind of keeps, uh, keeps them set up and their consistency and everything there. But that was simple, right? That was super simple. I know there's a lot of people out there that are uh, kind of intimidated on the tincture and the make the fico and to make the gummies. It doesn't have to be that way. You can make it, uh, make it yourself. You can, uh, you know, be a pro at it with, um, you know, with these tips and, and some of the tools that we have. And, it, you know, the fico is really great. Like I said, you can get them to whatever potency that you're looking for. You know, coconut oil is great. Uh, but if you want them a little stronger, fika is going to be the way to go. You'll have less, uh, less chance of separation from the oil um, and, and just makes for an overall better gummy in my experience, in my opinion. And um, cool. So that was it. A few other things you can do with the, uh, with the tincture here. So we've got some gel caps here. So basically, uh, when you've down, when you got the fico in here, you could add a little bit of coconut oil in that pan, stir it around, and then put it in some capsules. Now you got uh, some easy digestible capsules. You could just pop real easy. You could take them on the go. Those are really good. Um, and then the tincture bottles as well. Another good thing too, uh, tip that we have is, you know, if you're not ready to make your gummies in the, uh, you know, right away, once you're reduced down and got your fico, you know, that stuff's really hard to kind of move around. You can get one of those syringes. It's like a wide mouth syringe and you just soak that right up into it and then you can store it in the syringe. So when you're ready to use it, you just put a little dab on whatever you're looking to eat, put a little dab on a piece of toast and you can eat it like that. Uh, super simple, very potent, uh, very effective. And um, that's why I really love tinctures because you can get really uh, creative with it and, and you know, make them to your potency. Um, so awesome, thank you very much guys for joining us today. We, uh, we picked some winners, so we're gonna shout those out right now. Um, the first one for on Facebook, we got Frank White. Congratulations, you just won a bundle. Make sure you, uh, you message us or, or um, you know, shoot us an email. You can email me directly, Kenny at Magical.com. I'll get you taken care of. Uh, we got uh, Victoria Holland, Hollenrake on, uh, on YouTube. You're a winner as well. Congratulations, that's an awesome bundle. And then uh, the last one here we got on Instagram is, uh, I guess this is an Instagram name, is P Stash IO Farm. P Stash IO Farm. Congratulations. Pistachio Farm. Pistachio Farm. Okay, there we go. <laughs> P Stash I Okay, Pistachio Farm. Congratulations. That's pretty cool. You have a pistachio farm. I'd love you to send us some, uh, some pistachios. We'll send you a bundle. You send us some pistachios. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. So, guys, thanks for joining us again. Make sure you like the video, share it. Uh, you know, we'll be doing this weekly. So if you guys have any suggestions, recommendations, what you want to see, what you want us to cook, any tips and tricks, uh, please send it over to us. You know, email us, send it on Facebook, message us, uh, you know, make a post. We want to know. We want to hear from you guys. We really want to engage with you guys. We want to know what you guys want to see and want to hear. And, uh, you know, we're here to help you out and answer your questions and, uh, you know, help you along the way. That's what it's all about. Uh, so thanks again for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll make sure we get those winners taken care of. Shoot us, shoot me an email directly, Kenny at Magical Butter, or Kenny at Magical. Either one will work, and uh, we'll get you taken care of. You guys are awesome. We love you. Thank you for Magical Butter team. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. See you next time. We'll see you next week. <laughs>